<laughs> All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today is uh, March 20th. I think this is third Sunday. Yeah. And today is Sunday school. And uh, devotional hymn will be 79 at the cross. Amen. So I want y'all to join in with me in singing at the cross. And let's sing it at, let's sing at the cross if it's going to be our last time because we don't know. Amen. Because now let's just sing the song. Amen. <laughs> at last and did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die would he Come on in. 
Ephesians chapter 2. Okay. Beginning at verse 11. Okay, you ready? And it says, Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God and one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone, in whom all building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Right. And verse 22, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. We have read Second Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. May God bless the hearers and workers of the church. Amen. 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 And let us pray. Mm -hmm. God, Heavenly Father, we come this morning, Lord God. Lord, we come on this beautiful Sunday morning that we've never seen before, Lord God. Lord, you enable us to be able to get up and get out of our beds, Lord God, mm -hmm. and make it to your house of worship. Mm -hmm. And for that, God, we just want to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, thank you for giving us the strength, for giving us the power to be able to get up, Lord God. Because if it, wasn't for, if it wasn't for you, Lord God, we wouldn't be here today. And God, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Because God, you gave us your only begotten Son who died on the cross for our sins. And for that, God, we just want to say thank you, Lord God. Because you've been so good, everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord God. You woke us up this morning. You put food on our tables, Lord God. You gave us a place to, to live. You gave us a Friends to have, Lord God, holy friends, sanctified friends, Lord God. And for that, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. And Lord God, continue to touch our young people, Lord God, as we know this world is so wicked, but we know that they need you, Lord God. They need your word to, be, to live in them, Lord God. And Lord, just continue to strengthen us as we go through our daily lives, Lord God. And Lord God, touch little Pam as she come up for bring us the Sunday school lesson, Lord God. Let it be less of her and more of thee, Lord God. Just seek into her, Lord God, that she can bring thy word to thy people. And for that, God, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And Lord, touch our pastor, wherever he may be, Lord God. Touch his wife, Lord God. Touch St. Simon family as a whole, Lord God. Because we still know the state is still out here trying to kill, steal, and destroy us, Lord God. But we want to continue to trust in your word. We believe in your word, Lord God. Because you told us you will never leave us nor forsake us. And for that, God, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, this is my prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And the whole church say amen, amen, amen. amen. Okay, so today is uh, third Sunday, and we have a special guest for Sunday School this morning. Her name is Miss Pamela Rumpet. She's going to be giving us the Sunday School lesson. So let's get into it and just have a good time in the Lord Jesus Christ. Miss Pamela Rumpet, the floor is yours. Good morning. Good morning. So 
So before I start, I just want y'all to know if y'all have any questions that I cannot answer, <laughs> I will be calling on my father <laughs> who can answer them, okay? Okay. Today's Sunday school lesson is titled Christ Our Only Foundation. Is Christ our only foundation coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 23? If someone could please read verse 10 through 17 and then 18 to 23. Okay. Alright, Daddy. Alright. Alright. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses uh, 10 through 17. So states. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon, or thereupon. But, uh, verse 11, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, Double, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, he, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which is which temple ye are. Amen. Amen. It's only read 18 through 23. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Verse 20, And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. Amen. Amen. Thank you. In our title is, is this word called name foundation. Can anybody tell me what that word means? This what word foundation? Mm -hmm. Foundation is a, is a base structure. Some is, 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 is built to hold the substructure of a building. And we have to be strong. All right, anybody else? Okay. Foundation is the lowest, is the lowest low bare part of a building, typically below ground level. I have another question for you. What is a sure foundation? What is a what? Sure foundation. A sure foundation? Mm-hmm. Mm. Something that's gonna hold up like this chair. When <laughs> <laughs> I said it, it didn't fall down on the floor. <laughs> it's sure. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. You had your hand. Solid. 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 <laughs> Okay, everyone is correct. A sure foundation will support whatever may rest upon it. When we construct the building, for example, we are careful to make sure that the foundation is as strong as possible so the building will endure. Likewise, we must build our lives upon a sure foundation so that we are able to endure the trials and tribulations in this life. One more question. How do you build a firm foundation in Christ? A living hope. Anybody else? This word. Anybody else? Jesus. Anybody else? Trusting in Jesus. Say that again. Having faith and trusting in Jesus. Right? Anybody else? Daddy. Amen. Nobody? Alright. I have three steps to building a, a building a firm foundation. 
The first step is to dig deep and make space. Reading the word, praying, and asking for repentance of sin are tools needed to make that space. Next, you will create footings, also known as pillars, to bear up the weight of the building. For us believers, it is the belief in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, also known as the Trinity. It is also the belief in death and resurrection of Jesus, as well as Jesus Christ's second coming, the day of judgment, and the salvation of the faithful. The final step is the bond between us and the Holy Spirit. Okay. I'm going to read um, 1 Corinthians 3, 10-11. It says, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. When reading these verses, a parable comes to mind. This parable is about two men that built two different houses and was tested by the fire, and the outcome for both was different. In Matthew 7, 24, 27, it says, Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do with them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which, is built, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. The wise man built his house, his life, on the rock, a foundation that is deep, wide, and strong. This is God's word. Romans 11, 29, and 1 Peter 1, 23 to 25. God bless, blesses us all to be wise. God blesses us to all be spiritually wise. Are we going to build our house on worldly things, or are we going to build using God's instructions that were given to us? James 1, verse 22 to 25 says, But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straight, straight away forgetteth what manner of man he was. But... Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. I have another question. Okay. What part do we play in the building of the church, and why is it important? What part do we play in the building of the church? Mm -hmm. And why is it important? Um... Uh, one of the biggest parts is one is is uh, we need to be one body in the church. So first of all, mm -hmm. because you can't have uh, division in a church mm -hmm. when people come. To, a lot of times, people ch serve, ch go to, come to church for a certain minister, uh, uh, a certain choir singing that particular Sunday. And, but God's word still has to uh, come forth. But you can't put faith in no man. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that, mm -hmm. and I know that. Even back in my hometown, my pastor always told us, don't worship me, because you start worshiping me, you put me in danger. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I would say, uh, one, we are by the church being, a, being in one body, we are one. So, if, if, if one part of the body hurts, all, all one part of the body hurts, the whole church hurts. So, we need to be one. Anybody else? As believers, we are secure on this rock. A metaphor for God in the Old Testament coming from 2 Samuel 22 and 2 and Psalms 19 and 14. And we have a firm foundation, which is a metaphor for Christ, which can be found in Isaiah 28 verse 16, 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Also the cornerstone, Ephesians 2, 19 through 22, and 1 Peter 2, 6 through 7, to which everything is aligned. Proverbs 10.25 says, As the whirlwind passes, so is the wicked no more. 
but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. True Christianity is not about the container, but what it contains. Although the house, a person's life, may look good, what it is built upon will determine if it will weather the storms of life, let alone God's judgment. Any questions or comments? Um, I'm going to read uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 12 and 13. It says, Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. What we build on the foundation of Christ determines the quality of our life. Some of our works are like gold, silver, and stone. These things, these are things that last. And other works are like wood, hay, and straw. Things that don't last as long. No matter what you build with, it will all be tested and tried by fire. What we do will determine the outcome of the test. So for me, um, I have to give y'all a small, very small testimony, okay? Um, because... Y'all know, most of y'all know me. I grew up in the church. Y'all know my daddy and my mom. And uh, I felt like my foundation was tried when I found, when my band brother, when I found out that he had cancer. Um, we just had his funeral yesterday. And it was the whole time he was in hospice, I kept telling myself I couldn't, I wasn't gonna come to church, I wasn't gonna do this. Um, I started hanging out with the, with friends and family and doing other things besides thinking about coming here. Yesterday at his funeral, the uh, the preacher, he kind of talked about our lesson and I had to understand, my dad also helped me understand that even though he's gone, he still lives in with us and that it's okay to cry, it's okay to hurt and pain. But you also have to remember that everyone has to die someday. And that when our time is ready, that's just saying that we did what we were supposed to do here on earth. And so I feel like my brother did his part. He accomplished his goal that was set for him when he was living his 28 years of life. Okay. Amen. Um, I also have on here where my daddy gives feedback because um, he had... Uh, uh. <laughs> my daddy. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. When I seen her pimp saying dad speaks, I'm like, I've never seen that before. But anyway, <laughs> but on this subject and on this topic, and many of us know, when the Lord calls you to do something, the devil will raise his ugly head mm -hmm. to prevent you from doing that. Mm -hmm. He will put up an obstacle uh, before you to get you to not do what you've already been called and chosen to do. And like I was saying to her, I was like, Think about it in this terms. When you found out that you had to do this Sunday school lesson, you know, things started to pop up. And this just so happened to be one of those things that pop up. I said, you know, we talked a little bit, not gonna get into all of that, but about his being where he is and how some people pray for people to be healed when an understanding is some people tired of suffering and are ready to go to be with the Lord. And I said, it's about your perspective and how you look at things and how you understand things. But I said, but with all things being said, yes, it's sad that the young man had to go. Yes, I know how you feel. But at the same time, the Lord called you to do something this Sunday morning. You have to do what thus says the Lord, even through all of the pain, all of the trials, all of the situations. It doesn't stop you from having the sorrow and, you know, feeling the way you feel, but you can't let anything hinder what the Lord had called you to do. So I say, you know what, I love you, you should know I love you. Come on now. Right? But at the same time, let us do what we've been called to do. And as a daddy, now this is my turn, I'm already proud, but I thank the Lord that what he is already doing it's just a sight to behold for me anyway. Mm -hmm. But praise the Lord. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, any questions or comments from those verses? Anybody want to add anything? All right.
Um, verses 14 and 15 reads as follows. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. It is only the good deeds of a Christian that have eternal value, and for those who will be rewarded. But those things that are not honoring to God will not last. Anybody want to add anything to that? Verse 16 and 17 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. We belong to God. In fact, our body is the temple of God, the place where the Holy Spirit resides. Ephesians 1, 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. What we do with our lives should bring honor to God, for we are here to serve him. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Any comments? Any questions? Well, uh, we as Christians, and everybody confessing to be saved, we are a temple of God. Mm -hmm. I call ourselves walking temples because we confess to be saved, and we and we should live holy because God can't He can't live in an unclean temple. Amen. So our job is to live holy and to to let our light shine from towards men because there are a lot of unbelievers in the world, and the only Christ they gonna see is the Christ that's in you. Some people. Amen. Anybody else? I just want to make mention as it relates to verse 17. And it says, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Mm -hmm. And we heard God is love, and God is love, and God will do this, and God. You know, bless me and bless my children, those four and all. You know, and we, we hear the love side of God. But there's a side of God that we ought to get acquainted with. <laughs> and it's that side of God that the Word said He's a consuming fire. And He will get you. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta walk a, a straight line. Yes. I, 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 you know, I can't emphasize enough. I can't overemphasize mm -hmm. that you got to walk a straight line with God yes. and before the people. Because mm -hmm. you, know, you got to do both. Because if you don't, God will get you. Mm -hmm. He will. Amen. Mm -hmm. He will. Read the word. It's there. Amen. He's gotten a few before, long before us. He wiped out the whole tribe of Israel. Mm -hmm. Just wiped them all out. Because they refused to live holy. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says uh, Paul issues a stern warning to anyone who would bring harm. To God's temple. Mm -hmm. This is God's temple. Those who do so will be destroyed by God. Mm -hmm. God's temple, which is his people, is sacred to him. No matter what happened in this life. Mm -hmm. And it said justice is sure. So we have to be careful. Holy. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I like to say something too. I was in my studies this morning. I, um, 
in this verse it was talking about those who, and we run into this on a daily basis, those who criticize Christians all the time. Mm -hmm. And they, they think they'll get away with it. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, I'm Deacon Perry. I can say anything I want to say about Deacon Perry. But if Deacon Perry is living a, is living a, 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 to let his light so shine for Christ, and he's in charge of his household, and he's doing well, and his household is obeying and doing following Christ, then criticizing him is just like criticizing the Lord. Because Deacon Perry is in the body of Christ. So in other words, it says, when people criticize those that are in the body of Christ, you're criticizing the Lord and you're criticizing God in that instance because it is not correct it is not it is not correct that they do that. But like you said, and others have said too, you will pay the penalty. Because it says, touch not thy anointed. Right? And that does not only mean just a preacher. That means anybody that's within the body of Christ that's actually living and doing what uh, Christ's commandment asks us to do to our best abilities. Right, amen. One more thing. And that word defiled in the context like this, like everybody is saying, there's an external uh, somewhat defilement where somebody else do what, what, but they're accountable for what they do. But there's also an internal defilement. And I, forgive me, I didn't write it down, but the scripture where it says those things on the outside don't defile a man, but what comes out of that man, those things defile that man. And so put this in a context like, uh, and to say Pastor, but D was saying, you know, we got to carry ourselves a certain way. If we are, as the Bible say we are, the temple of God, those things that proceed out of us, That's right. right, that defile us, guess what? You just can't say whatever you want. You just can't do whatever you want. For the Lord will break you down. He will sit you down. He will destroy you. But I, and you get gonna get to it, right? But uh, but we got to be also careful. Yeah, there's some external things, but the real real thing is that internal thing. Are you who you say you are? How you live? How you carry yourself? We'll prove that. Yeah. And if you say, like the scriptures say, those who claim themselves to be Jews but are not, mm -hmm. right? Oh, you, 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 you yeah. gonna get some hell yeah. fire <laughs> come oh, yeah. down on you. So yeah, we gotta make sure that we continue mm -hmm. to live a life like it was said. If the Lord dwells in you, mm -hmm. oh, there should be some arguments and fights going on between the Lord and your flesh mm -hmm. to cause you to do right, to go the right way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's external and internal defilement. We got to be careful of both. Amen. 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 Verse 18 and 20 says, Let no man deceive himself, and if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again the Lord knoweth the thought of the wise, that they are vain. In the world's sight we are fools, but we are the we are wise in the sight of God when we build on the foundation provided for us by him, which is the spiritual foundation of Christ. Colossians, Colossians 2, 8 through 10, which says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. At the tradition of men, at the runnings of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Any questions, comments, anything you want to add? I think in that somewhere I was talking about um, be careful of false teaching mm -hmm. and when you uh, know it all and you think you know everything <laughs> and you can speak so eloquently and people just you know people we hear something good and it sound good to us we're gonna flock right to it uh -huh. Uh -huh. oh yeah let me go over there because i like the way they do that uh -huh. but is it true doctrine and that's what paul yeah. is teaching mm -hmm. don't deviate from this bible mm -hmm. don't deviate from christ Yes. Stop lifting yourself up. Yes. And that's what, you know, so Amen. that's what he's teaching. Yes. And especially to our young people, yeah, we got to be careful of 
all this feel good stuff that appeal to your emotion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We gonna make you rich and we gonna get this brand new house. <laughs> oh you know, oh all this kind of stuff. Oh it's all about lifting up Jesus. Mm -hmm. You go to a service and they don't say nothing about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Tip on out of there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So I, I think that's kind of where yes. some of that is coming from. Yes. You know, be careful. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's warning the Corinthian mm -hmm. church about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, 21 and 20, verse 21 through 23. Therefore let no no man glory, therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ's and Christ is God. We as Christians have been given the eternal, authoritative, and supernatural riches and resources of God. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, in conclusion, as the storms of life, the tribulations of our times, and the precautions of the world come against us, we must stand firm upon the Lord Jesus Christ, the bedrock on which our lives are anchored and secure. Otherwise, we will drift away along the winds and waves of today's current culture that rejects Christ. Ultimately, we will end up shipwrecked or marooned at some deserted, lonely place. Nobody wants to be there. Why not take a moment and sincerely consider that your, what your priorities are and then determine to strengthen your spiritual disciplines so that in both word and deed you will live as God's servant. Upon the foundation of Christ, only then to remain standing when the storms of life come against you. Thank you. Oh, that was it.